Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to Dr. Tarek Arabaike. Today we will discuss and uh, revise all about the upper limb anatomy. We will discuss all about the upper limb bones, their three dimensional view. And uh, let's start our topic. If you are new on my channel, subscribe our channel uh, for more information and uh, on the bell notification for upcoming videos. Let's start our topic. This is, this is the entry view of the upper limb. You can see this is the left sided upper limb. You can also see the posterior view. This is the posterior of the upper limb, and this is lateral view, and this is the medial view, and uh, this is the superior view, and this is inferior view. Let's start with the anterior view of the upper limb. This is the upper limb shape. This is the bony arrangement of the upper limb. This is the three dimensional of the upper limb. We will discuss briefly upper limb this is this is the first bone of the upper limb of the shoulder part shoulder region this is bone this is the more horizontal bone and it is the only bone present in the horizontal plane human body this bone is known as the clavicle bone and also known as the collar bone and also known as a beauty bone in the woman because it is the more prominent anterior part in woman and this bone we can separate it again this is a beauty bone color bone beauty bone color bone or uh, clavicle bone this is the anterior view and this is the posterior view of the color bone this is again lateral view medial view and superior view and finally is the inferior view let's start with the anterior view landmarks this is the medial surface of the uh, medial side of the clavicle this is the medial or sternal surface or the coastal surface coastal side and other this one is the lateral or the acromial or the brachial because this is from the arm side so from anterior view these points these are this is the sternal end sternal facet and here is a coastal tuberosity here is here this is the coastal tuberosity you can see here this is the coastal tuberosity of the clavicle coastal tuberosity present on the medial side are the sternal side and here is a groove this is known as the subclavian groove here the subclavian vessel pass through this below the subclavian muscle and here is tubercle known as the cuneate tubercle here uh, ligament ligament of the coracoclavicular muscle attach here and here is a line known as the trapezoid line where trapezius muscle get its insertion and here is the acromial end this is anterior view of the clavicle here is subclavian groove here is conoid tubercle here is trapezoid line and here is this is the acromial end and here is sternal end this is the anterior view now see the posterior view here again this is the acromial end mean lateral side this is the acromial facet here is again trapezoid line this is conoid tubercle and here is subclavian groove and this is the coastal tuberosity and here is sternal facet and let's see the lateral view this is the lateral view of the stern of the clavicle and here is medial view uh, median side this this side attached with the sternum minimum of the sternum here is superior view if you see someone superiorly or uh, from cranial side the clavicle will be look like this and inferior view this is the inferior view of the clavicle clavicle is a long bone it has a two and epiphysis and uh, middle 
shaft a uh, metaphyse this is the long bone and it is the only bone present in the horizontal plane it is only bone present more anterior more anterior of the all bones in the human body and this is all about the clavicle clavicle medially attached with the member of the sternum and the laterally attached with the acromial process of the clavicle acromial process of the scapula and this is all about the clavicle or collarbone or uti bone it has three ossification center two center are primary center one is the lateral and medial end and one is the secondary center which is present in the shaft that occur by the meeting or the, or the fusion of the medial and lateral parts of the clavicle so next bone is scapula here is a wing shaped bone of the upper limb this bone is known as the scapula now we will see scapula separately this is the scapula or wing bone this is the anterior of the scapula anteriorly we will look are seen scapula like this and review we will see each feature of the scapula again this is the This is the attachment, acromial attachment of the scapula for the clavicle. Here is the acromion, acromion process. Here is the acromial angle. Here you can see here is the acromial angle. Here is acromial angle present posteriorly, posteriorly and superiorly. And here is coracoid process of the scapula. Here is supra scapula notch here. You can see the scapula notch clearly. Here is the whitish line show supra scapular line. A uh, supra scapular notch here is the neck of the scapula here, and here is infraglenoid tubercle. This is the glenoid cavity. This is socket for the ball shape or spherical shape head of the humerus that together make the shoulder joint at the ball and socket joint of the upper limb and here is supra glenoid tubercle and this is the scapular spinous or this is the scapular spine and here is the spine has two lip upper lip and the lower lip this is the lower lip and here is upper limb the superior is upper lip and the lower is a lower lip and this is the in posteriorly scapula divided in two parts supra scapular region and the infra scapular region supra spinous supra spinous fossa and the infra spinous fossa here this is the infra spinous fossa this division is due to the version of the spine that spine divide scapula into two parts supra and the infra and here is medial border or vertebral border because if you have seen from entry view this is the entry view of the scapula this is the medial border and the vertebral border of the scapula and here is a inferior angle this is the lateral border or axillary border because here is axilla present this is the subscapular fossa. This is the subscapular fossa. Here is the subscapular muscle present. And here is infraglenoid. Here, here is neck. Here is the glenoid cavity. Here is supraglenoid tubercle, suprascapular nose. This is the superior angle of the scapula. Here is a superior border. This is the here is border and here is angle. Angle is the is the point where the bone curved down and here is acromion here is the coracoid process 
here is the acromion and here is the angle of the acromion posteriorly and here is the spinal scapula here is the this is this is the lower lip of the spine here is the upper lip of the spine this is the again medial border or vertebral border here is the infraspinous fossa supraspinous fossa in the infraspinous fossa the infraspinatus muscle present and here in supraspinatus muscle in the supraspinous fossa this is this is the superior border here is the sp superior border here and here is the superior angle here here is the superior angle you can see the white line show the this is the superior angle of the scapula so scapula this is the anterior view this is posterior view you can see lateral view here here is the medial view here is the superior view and in inferior view you have to remember scapula has two surfaces anterior and posterior anterior known as the sub, sub, subscapularis this is the subscapularis and the posterior is divided into two parts due to the presence of the spine supraspinatus supraspinous here is supraspinous and the infraspinous and it has a three border this is the medial or vertebral this is the inferior uh, angle sorry here is the lateral border and here is the superior border three border medial are known as the vertebral lateral or axillary border and the superior border three angle superior angle lateral angle and here is the inferior angle three surface supraspinous fossa three fossa supraspinous fossa infraspinous fossa and the subscapularis fossa and it has a two process coracoid process here here coracoid process and here is the acromion process and originally acromion process is spine of the here is spine of the scapula so scapula basically joined by laterally with the head of the humerus to make the glenohumeral joint or the ball and socket joint of the shoulder and also is joined with the clavicle with the acromion process so, so this bone also known as the wing bone because it is wing shaped this is all about the scapula now see another bone of the upper limb here is a large bone or long bone this is this bone known as the humerus bone or also known as the brachium and also known as the arm because it make arm this is the long bone it has head neck shaft or body and also has the lower end it has so start from entry view this is the entry view of the humerus this is the posterior view this is the lateral view here is the medial view and superior view and then inferior view we can see humerus in each and every angle so anterior view start from the anterior view you can see the anterior landmarks here is the head of the humerus here is the anatomical neck anatomical neck, neck is the part where the humeral arteries anterior and posterior circumflex humeral artery circling the neck of the anatomical neck of the humerus here is the surgical neck and here is a laser tubercle and here, here is a greater tubercle lateral tubercle present anteriorly and the posterior is the greater tubercle here is the inter tubercular sulcus or groove and here is crest of the greater tubercle here is the crest of the laser tubercle and here is the deltoid velocity in deltoid velocity the deltoid muscle get its insertion and function of the not, function of the deltoid tuberosity is to make abduction of the arm and here is anterolateral surface 
and here is intermediate surface this is a capitulum here is a troglia this is medial epicondyle here is a here you can see a, this this groove like structure known as the coronoid fossa for the coronoid process of the ulna and here is supra metal supraculinal ridge and here is and again again a fossa known as the radial fossa for the head of the radius and here is lateral supraculinal ridge and here is the lateral epicondyle this is the anterior of the humerus this is now you will see the posterior view here is this is the olecranon fossa for the olecranon process of the ulna olecranon process of the ulna inserted into the olecranon fossa of the humerus and here is again lateral epicondyle and here is a posterior surface of the humerus here is medial supracondylar ridge medial epicondyle this is the deltoid velocity and here is radial groove from the radial groove pass the radial nerve here is this is the this is the radial groove this is you can see here this is the radial groove it looks clearly here is crease of the greater tubercle this is the head of the humor you can see head of the humerus clearly it is hemispherical or ball shape this is the head of the humerus and here is the anatomical neck and here is a surgical neck here and this is the inter tubal tubal tubular inter tubercle sulcus and here is the lizard tubercle greater tubercle crest of the greater tubercle crest of the laser tubercle this is the deltoid tuberosity so this is the posterior view then is the lateral view here here is the again medial view of the humerus so this is the superior view of the humerus you can see the head of the humerus ball like alba shape here is the posterior view of the humerus you can see this part of the humerus looks like really here this is the trochlea this is the capitulum lateral epicondyle posterior surface olecranon fossa this is the posterior view uh, inferior view and here is the anterior view so superiorly humerus joined with the gullet cavity of the scapula and mid in inferiorly it joined with the head of the radius and also with the upper or neck portion of the ulna they make the inferiorly make the elbow joint and uh, superiorly or proximally it make the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint this is all about the humerus so next bone is of the bone of the forearm humerus make arm and other two bones make the forearm this is the medial bone of the forearm known as the ulna this is the ulna bone you can see ulna here this is long bone again ulna is the only bone that has its head distally but other long bone has head proximally this is anterior view of the ulna this is the posterior view laterally and it is seen medially you can see the ulna it has speci special feature here this is the olecranon this is the pulley shaped process of the ulna that fits in the olecranon process of the humerus during extension of the forearm here this is the superior view here is the inferior view you can differentiate ulna very easily when you see in the 
examination here this is the anterior ulna here from proximal you can see this is the trochlear nose here is a coronoid process fixing in the coronoid fossa of the humerus here is a olecranon this is radial nose of the ulna the head of the radius attached with the radius nose of the ulna here is ulna tuberosity that attached with the radius medial side of the radius here is anterior surface this is the anterior border here is interosseous border this is the interosseous border and also the lateral border it attach with the medial border of the radius to make the synosmosis joint and in distally you can see the head of the ulna head of the ulna present in the distal portion here is head of the ulna this is this is the articular surface of the ulna and here is the circular surface of the ulna here this is clear here here is the ulna and it is has to load process here is articular surface and this is the head of the ulna this is the anterior posteriorly laterally and then medially you can easily easily differentiate ulna due to its special feature special special feature one number is presence of the olecranon or pulley shaped process presence of the coronary process and also presence of the head of the ulna in distal part and also medial steroid process of the steroid process of the ulna this is ulna proximally ulna proximally joined with the humerus you can see here this is the humerus proximally and this is the ulna and this is the humerus ulna proximally joined with the humerus and also with the radius in the elbow joint here you can see clearly junction between the ulna and humerus here this is the ulna and here this is the humerus and you can see also this is the radius and the upper or uh, proximal radio ulnar joint here in the elbow joint this is the all about the ulna and but in distal ulna also joined with the radius in the distal radio ulnar joint here this is the ulna here in the distal in the rest joint and next bone is radius radius is the most lateral bone of the arm this is the radius bone you can see anteriorly like this posteriorly lateral view here medial view superiorly and then you can see finally inferiorly here this is the anterior of the radius this is the radius it is also is a long bone it has head proximally or uh, spirally and the neck also here is this is the head of the radius here is the articular surface of the radius that joined with the radial fossa of the uh, radial notch of the humerus and this is the neck of the radius here is the ulnar notch uh, ulnar tuberosity of the or uh, radial tuberosity this is the radial tuberosity that attached with the ulnar tuberosity of the ulna and here is anterior border and this is the uh, groove like this is the this is the uh, interosseous this is the interosseous this is the interosseous border of the radius this is and here is ulnar notch in which the head of the ulna attach this is the articular surface of the radius you can see clearly here this is the distal surface of the distal portion of the radius here this is the articular surface for the lunate bone and here is the articular surface of the circumferred bone this is the slow process or the lateral process of the forearm here is Tarsal tubercle of the radius or the lateral tubercle of the radius, it is present posteriorly. Here is the posterior surface. This is the inferior view of the radius. So, radius 
proximally as pretty joined with the humerus and uh, also with the ulna in the elbow joint and also make the sandosa joint with the ulna in, in midway by the central muscles or the interosseous membrane and distally joint also with the distal radio ulnar joint with the ulna head of the ulna and also make joint with the wrist joint with the scaphoid and the lunate distally this is all about the radius next bone is carpal bones a rest bone or hand bone these are the carpal bones you can see here these are the carpal bones we will see all carpal bones discuss as we already discussed there are eight carpal bones they are arranged in two rows proximal and distal rows each row consists of the four bones so start from the lateral to medial side and start from the thumb side to little finger here is this is proximal row first bone sacrificed second bone is the lunate and third bone here you can see here this is the small bone here is this is this is the trachytrum this is the pisiform below that pisiform is the trachytrum and small bone above the trachytrum is the piform it is small p-shaped here you can also see this is the small pisiform bone this is the p-shaped this is a very small bone here and this is the all about the proximal row four bones sacrificed lunate and here is a trachytrum and here is a pg form these are all four bones of the proximal row or upper row and then we discuss this is the lower row or the distal row this is the trapezium this is the trapezoid here is the capitate and here is the hamate this is the first one is the lateral bone that is with the thumb metacarpal known as the trapezium it is the table shape and here is the trapezoid this is the this is the trapezoid bone and here is the capitate is the long bone long bone of the carpal bone and here is the last bone known as the Hamate, it has a hook like structure. You can see here, here this is hook of the hamate. This is the distal row. And now we will discuss about the metacarpal. There are five metacarpals. They are number from the lateral to medial. First, this is the first metacarpal. Here is the second, third, fourth, and fifth. The first metacarpal is known as the thumb, second metacarpal known as the shadow finger, and third is the capital finger, and the fourth one is the ring finger, and fifth one is the little finger. These are, are known as the from lateral to medial. Thumb, first one, thumb, second is the shadow finger, third one is the capital finger, fourth is the ring finger, and the fifth one is the little fingers. Each metacarpal consists of the three phalanges, but only thumb are the first consists of the two phalanges. These are the small small bones. These are each these 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 are consists of the proximally base, medially shaft, and distally is the head. This is the you can see the proximal metaphyl proximal phalanges of the metacarpal of the thumb this is the proximal here is a this is this is the metacarpal of the thumb this is the first phalange or the proximal phalanges and this is the distal phalange of the thumb but other you can see each bone has proximal medial and the distal one proximal medial distal also fourth one has the proximal medial and distal and last also has proximal medial and the distal 
phalanx these are the go to the hand bones now we will revise again hand consists of the here is a scapula here is a clavicle this is the humerus this is the scapula and this is the clavicle this make the shoulder and here is a humerus make the arm or brachium here is a ulna and radius this make the forearm these bo two bones and here is a this this region this is small bones region these are irregular bones these these make the hand this is the hand these these are eight bones consists of the two rows proximal scaphoid lunate trachytrum pisiform and uh, distal row trapezium trapezoid capitate hamate these eight carpal bones now fifth meta carpal first are thumb second shahadat third capital and fourth ring and fifth is the little so and last are the phalanges here is proximal and is the distal only two present in the thumb phalanges and but others has three proximal medial and the distal so i hope you have understand all about the anatomy uh, three dimensional anatomy of the upper limb and if you have any question or any confusion you can make comment and inshallah i will will try my best to make it clear see you for next allah hafiz